You know how Singapore is like the Switzerland of Asia? Well, Guyana is kind of like the Singapore of South America. No, actually, that's not a good comparison. They don't have the same level. I meant they're ethnic. Okay, you know what? Just cue the intro. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Yes, the people here call their country Guyana. It's like if a guy was named Anna. Uh, and that's a problem because... Uh, I didn't say it was. I mean, dude, I go by Barbie. Dude, did you just assume my- Okay, this is not one of those YouTube channels. Let's move on. Now, Guyana is kind of strange because geographically, they are completely located on the South American continent, but if you ask a Guyanese person, they'll say that they are Caribbean, even though they don't even touch the Caribbean Sea. First of all, Guyana is located in the northern section of mainland South America, bordered by Venezuela and Brazil and Suriname, with the North Atlantic Ocean flanking the North Coast. The country is divided into 10 regions, with the capital along the coast, Georgetown. By the way, the country's shape kind of looks like a fat crucifix. The country has a lot of small regional airports and airstrips, however, the two largest and international airports are both located in Georgetown, Chedi Jagan International, and the smaller one, Eugene F. Korea International. Otherwise, outside Georgetown, Bartika has the largest regional airport. Otherwise, seaports and container terminals can be found all along the coast in places like New Amsterdam, Linden, Essequibo, and of course, Georgetown as well. Now, here's the thing. About 90% of the people live along the coast on only about 10% of the land with a few outskirt communities, mostly on the east, along the border of Suriname and Brazil. Cross-country driving in Guyana is very limited. I mean, you can take a ferry at Bartika and drive a little bit into the upper Takutu and Po Taro Siparuni or Kuyuni Mazaruni regions. However, if you cruise along the coast, you'll stop somewhere around the farming town of Hackney along the Pamaru River, and suddenly everything just kind of dead ends. To this day, there are no roads that lead into the Barima Waini region. The entire population of about 26,000 people are only accessed through river navigation and short jungle landing strips for small planes. In addition, there are no roads that lead into Venezuela. If you want to go there, you will have to drive all the way south, cross at Lethem, and pretty much all the way to Boa Vista, Brazil, and then backtrack up north into Venezuela. This is because they kind of have a partially ongoing dispute with Venezuela. Basically, Venezuela believes that everything west of the Essequibo River should be theirs. Guyana was not having it. Basically, they signed an agreement in Geneva in the 60s, but it didn't really do anything, and today Venezuela is kind of like, Okay, fine. I guess the land is kind of yours now. Hey! Stop building a military base on Ancoco Island. That's our territory. And then in 2011, Guyana was like, Hey, UN, I'd like to extend my coast about 150 nautical miles, please. Uh, no, that's our water claim. Uh, no, it literally juts out from our coast and all nations are entitled to an exclusive economic zone, okay? Back off from the Tigri New River Triangle. Whoa, whoa, no. Okay, let's agree to withdraw our military forces from the region. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay. Psych! <laughs> Oh, South American countries, always fighting over land you will never inhabit. Otherwise, some top notable sites and landmarks include places like St. George's crumbling colonial townscape with St. George's Cathedral, Dembrara Harbor Bridge, one of the longest floating bridges in the world, the headquarters of CARICOM or the Caribbean community, the Umanayana Building, the Stabrook Market, Walter Roth Museum, Zoological Park, Georgetown Lighthouse, Pandama Winery, and the Radha Krishna Mandir Hindu Temple. Oh my gosh, there are so many cool spots in a place that's like mostly made up of unexplored jungle. Let's see more of that now. Basically, Guyana is like a survival-themed reality TV show location shoot paradise. First of all, Guyana is the second most densely forested country in South America after Suriname as three quarters of the country is covered in trees. Keep in mind though, the country is actually made up of five natural regions. A fertile marshy plain on the coast, the white sand belt inland made up of sand and clay, where most of the mineral deposits are located, the lush rainforest highland, and if you go way far south, you can get a little bit of desert and savanna in the interior, and then you get the interior savanna lowlands along the border with Brazil. Guyana sits on what is called the Guyana Shield, an elevated geological formation on South America, north of the Amazon. This area essentially creates some of the most beautiful iconic waterfalls in all of the strange flat top Tepui Mountains, including the tallest peak in Guyana, Mount Roraima, shared by Venezuela and Brazil, even though Brazil only has like 5% of it, but hey, it still counts. The longest river is of course the easily visible from satellite images, Essequibo River, which pretty much transects the entire country east to west and is a major source of transport and trade in Guyana. In the forest, you can find thousands upon thousands of species of mammals mammals and birds and reptiles like the three-toed sloth, tamanduas, tamarins, capuchins, capybaras, pacas, over 50 different types of bats which make up like a fifth of all the mammals, and the national animal, the jaguar, can be found here as well. Resource-wise, agriculture and mining has been the most important economic activity with sugar, bauxite, rice, and gold making up about three quarters of all export earnings. Yes, gold. Nonetheless, even though exports have been steadily increasing over the years, Guyana still remains one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. Luckily, Guyana gained the world's attention when major companies like 
ExxonMobil and Shell discovered high quality oil bearing sandstone reservoirs holding potentially $40 billion in crude revenue oil 120 miles off the coast. If Guyana wins the appeal at the UN, this could potentially boost their economy as they currently have no oil production. The national food of Guyana is the Amerindian dish pepper pot. Typically the pot is reheated with new meats added every day, sometimes even for months. Other top natural spots include places like the Three Sister Lakes, including Mainstay Lake that looks like a lake of Coca-Cola due to the minerals, the Rapapuni area in the interior of the country surrounded by vast savannas, forests, and mountains, the annual rodeo event and safari that lets visitors get close to the wild and rugged interior, the beautiful Iwakrama rainforest, of course a section of Roraima Mountain which you can get close to by taking Roraima Airways that leaves from Eugene F. Corre Airport, and the iconic national symbol Kyder Falls, the widest single drop waterfall in the world. Quite a fascinating place with physical diversity, very much like the people of this country. Guyana is honestly like one of the strangest demographical anomalies in the world because most of the population has ethnic roots that are not even indigenous to the continent. First of all, the country has about 740,000 people and has a high emigration rate in which around half a million Guyanese citizens live abroad. The largest group, the East Indians, make up about 43%, 30% are blacks with African descent, about 16% are mixed, about 10% are Amerindian, and the remainder of the population is mostly made up of Europeans, mostly Portuguese, as well as a few Chinese tossed in, in there as well. They also use the Guyanese dollar as their currency they use the type A, B, D, and G plug outlets, and they are also one of the only two countries in South America that drives on the left side of the road. Going back to the Amerindians, there are nine indigenous tribes recognized in this country, and historically, the Lokono and Kalina tribes dominated the areas that Guyana encompasses today. So you're probably wondering by now, okay, how on earth did Guyana become such a mini India? Well, to answer that, you basically have to know a little bit of history. In a nutshell, tribes were the first ones here, Columbus passes by, but doesn't care to enter, the Dutch come in, failed at finding El Dorado, the British sneak in without the Dutch knowing, but then the Dutch were like, and whatever, fine, take it. And that's when the British were like, Sir, slavery has been abolished. Oh, but there's still lots of work to be done. How can we get really cheap labor that's almost like slavery, but still kind of technically not? If only we Brits had another territory full of indentured servants to exploit and capitalize off of. Oh, oh yeah! yeah! Yeah, Scotland put up too much of a fight, so they settled for India. Most of the East Indians in Guyana are from the Bhojpuri speaking areas of North India. However, today, many of them have lost their ability to speak it and settle only for English or Creole. To this day, Guyana is one of the only three countries outside of Asia in which Hinduism is an official religion practiced by over a quarter of the population. Nonetheless, Christianity is the predominant religion as about two thirds of the population adheres to the faith, mostly in the Protestant branch. Guyana is the only South American country in which English is the official language spoken by everyone, regardless of background. Ground. However, the majority of the country also speaks Guyanese Creole. The Creole here is a slightly altered version of English with an Indian and African influence, and most of it is written in a very simplistic phonetic format. For example, Georgetown is Georgetown. Every day is every day. Rice field is rice field, and so on. Because Guyana is incredibly racially heterogeneous, heter heterogen Scoots, what's the word? Heterogeneous? I think it's heterogeneous. Heterogeneous. They've sort of kind of developed a really cool cultural integration method in which everyone takes part in everyone's lives, traditions, and customs. Almost everyone in the country has a relative that is either Hindu, Christian, Muslim, or maybe even Baha'i or Buddhist. As a kid, you're taught to call elders your auntie or uncle, even if they are complete strangers and a completely different race. Everyone celebrates everyone's holidays regardless of their belief system. Everyone takes part in the culture for holly or pagua, everyone has a Christmas tree at Christmas, and everyone flies kites on a beach on Easter, and even during Eid, everyone shares in the food. They even have their own version of carnival called Mashramani. Oh, and the British influence is still very noticeable. Everyone loves cricket and they totally eat Marmite, which by the way, British and Kiwi geography peeps, send me more Marmite. I love that stuff. All I have left is this tube of Vegemite. I don't know how to explain it, I just, I just crave Marmite. Nonetheless, Guyana does have its struggles. 80% of the people with tertiary education move out, causing a sort of brain drain that limits Guyana's ability to progress in certain fields and industries like medicine and education and engineering. Also, you know, there was that whole Jim Jones People's Temple cult incident thing that happened in the late 70s, but hey, those were all Americans, not Guyanese people. Sorry, I had to mention it. It was like the craziest thing that ever happened in their country. Some of the most notable people with Guyanese descent might include classic artists like Sol Ray, Ken Snake Hips Johnson, R.B. Greaves, Godfrey Cambridge, William Austin, Emmy Award journalist Asha Blake, politician Shirath Rampal, athletes Mark McCoy, Ezekiel Jackson, and Mr. Universe Hugh Ross, musicians Eddie Grant, Philly Knott, who even has a statue in Dublin, model Shakira Bakshkane, Leona Lewis has a Guyanese father, and Rihanna has a Guyanese mother, and a lot more, but we'd best move on to the final stretch of this episode.
Now, because Guyana is so diverse, they kind of have an advantage when it comes to diplomatic outreach. Brazil is like Guyana's personal trainer. They help them with military training, and if anything goes down, they will step in and help Guyana should anything arise. Now, India is like the estranged mother that lost her baby and finally reunited, but has years to catch up on. In addition to a loving, cordial relationship with her long-lost child, India likes to help fund development facilities for things like agriculture and information technology. However, their best friends would probably be Suriname and Trinidad and Tobago. Suriname is like the Dutch-speaking little brother, and Trinidad is like the girl that they both have a crush on and compete for. All three countries have been close since day one, each has a high East Indian and Hindu population, and they all share so much in terms of culture and business. In conclusion, there is no one type of Guyanese person, and if you meet one, you still haven't even seen a fraction of the whole picture. The only way to scratch the surface of Guyana is to simply book a flight and step on the surface. Stay tuned, Haiti is coming up next.